go. Other interesting cultural news have Anheuser-Busch farmers tweet mostly flops completely. Now, this is from specifically the parent company, well, not the global Anheuser-Busch Bev X Twitter account, this is just from the Anheuser-Busch account on X Twitter, and it's about 22 seconds long. Interestingly enough, they must have paid someone to make this. Hopefully it wasn't much, because it's about as effective as, the, as most government actions, for pretty, pretty much nothing. And they say, quote, for 165 years, we've supported generations of American farmers, and we're proud to leave the industry as the first company bringing U.S. farmers, U.S. farm certified brands to shelves across the country. Hashtag farmland. Which, not very persuasive. But it's about, I'm sure they have some cliche music. And a lot, ironically enough, they're showing farmland. There is a disclaimer message in small font to the top right of the screen that says message for 21 year plus. I say it's hilariously ironic because they hired Bill Mulvaney for $185,000 to advertise to 15 years olds on X Twitter to sell Bud Light, which the free market re appropriately rewarded them by a loss of $1.4 billion in sales. Those sales that they would have normally gotten just evaporated thanks to the Bud Light boycott. Other neptudes seem to know no bounds. So we'll see if this plays. It looks like a nice little a field with a bunch of hops or whatever they put in beer. And actually, Fortunately, YouTube will just strike music so I can't play music. So you'll just have to hear my eloquent voice describe it. They have, wow, they actually have a white farmer. That, that's something you don't see in advertising much these days. He's picking up some piece of wheat or something and examining it, looking at it. They say partnerships with over 700 American growers. The guy's wearing flannel. You know he's a real farmer in that case. Not very persuasive. They say 700 million spent each year on ingredients from American growers. Which, again, not very unique. Any company that takes your place will do that the same thing. Part of business is, more often than not, it's cheaper to use local resources to decrease on the cost of goods sold, really. Because if you were to import them, again, imagine growing crops, importing them all the way to the U.S., brewing them here, and then selling it to customers. So, some things, not all things, but some things in business make sense just to grow and manufacture and use locally. $700 million. Looks like they got, is that grandma? Not my grandma, but looks like a gal just sitting down. She, she literally just sits in the field and just rubbing the dirt off her hands. Is that all she was doing? She's, just, she's squatting down. She has a shovel, which, spoiler alert, farmers are using huge $500,000 plus harvesting equipment. They're not using, again, on average, these, the farmers that Anderson Bush is buying from, they're working with massive volume of hops and wheat and whatever they put in their crappy beer these days. They're, I can almost guarantee they're not using a shovel in general, yet alone on this massive field. But again, this is Bud Light marketing. They probably don't even know what a farm is. So they have that lady with the shovel on the ground. She's, you know, just getting this stuff off her hand. And it ends with a bit of a can and it says, American Farm and Trust, U.S. Farm Certified. It doesn't even look like that fancy of a seal. It's just a big circle. And it literally just says, first ever U.S. Farm Certified brand. Wow. That's amazing. No other beer company does that. Oh, wait. They all do. And... I, again, it's just, it's almost akin to General Motors when they used to, again, they don't allegedly pay for these, but how many times have you heard of the JD Power Award? There are so many of those stupid awards for so many categories, no one takes them seriously. They oversaturated the market with the sheer volume of awards. That became such a joke. There's a whole YouTube channel dedicated to making fun of GM and the JD Power Awards. I believe it was a Zebra, it was a Zebra channel. And he would just parody all the commercials that were made because at the time, all the commercials that General Motors were putting out we're saying, oh yeah, it got this word and this word from J.D. Power. Spoiler, every car company on the planet gets some type of accolade or award from J.D. Power. That's not that unique. That's not that special. And I think that's why you don't see a lot of these car companies really putting emphasis. They might mention it once in a commercial. But, again, it's not that persuasive to win that award because everyone does. Now this, what's the opposite of viral? Like some of my videos. It got basically no views. Now, we could change that right here, right now, by sharing this video with a friend and liking it and commenting it. 
with magical YouTube runnable algorithm, perhaps it'll help. But it's got 1,614 views within over 48 hours. Now this had time to brew, pun obviously intended, and it, only, it got less than 2,000 views. Now not to brag, but two or three months ago, I got a video with 3,000 views. Perhaps because I suited up and the men in this video did not. Coincidence? I think not. Probably. Now, scrolling down, it also got 34 likes, which is nearly impossible to be that bad. Although, this is even worse. It got two comments. Two! Which is, again, for a multi-billion dollar brand, embarrassing to say the least. Now, because there's only two, I can read all of them. Not to be... I mean, they got nearly ratio. I mean, 50% of the comments were negative. Now, granted, I might be a little biased. This first comment, guy looks pretty damn handsome, not gonna lie. Now, this first comment comes from a brilliant individual on ex-Twitter known as hashtag the topping show. And he says, quote, clothing companies tried something similar with American cotton growers years ago, even put a QR code to scan to see which proud farmer it came from. I thought it was really neat, had zero effect on sales. Better idea, put your CEO on Joe Rogan podcast and address the situation, unquote. Now, obviously, I might be a little biased against that with that gentleman, but he and I got one like, which might not sound like a lot, but it's better than the other guy who got a comment. Or the other comment, the other comment comes from Blue C. Fuss, saying, quote, Joe Rogan drinks Bud Light. He understands AB is a conservative company, unquote. Not to brag, but he didn't get any likes. And interesting, interestingly enough, it wasn't even me who liked my comment. So, humble brag right there. And again, that's a sad thing. Most Americans do not care about Made in the USA. I mean, they vote with their dollars. And I blame not just the consumers, but also the politicians to make it prohibitively difficult to manufacture darn near anything in the United States. I mean, most everything I own is made in the USA, partially because I either build it or I search fervently to find it. And again, it's usually more expensive. Now, granted, that being said, it's usually a higher quality product. I mean, this table took me quite some time to make. It's 100% made in the USA, partially because I assembled it, I sourced all the materials, made sure it was made in the USA. Good old 150 year old antique barn wood. Got some silver coins from back when American money was real, actually really worth something. Legs are all steel, reclaimed, uh, recycled steel, clear coated. Epoxy is moss epoxy, made in the USA, which for all, for all the gallons of epoxy I've gotten from them, I should have, should have said something about sponsorship or looked into that, but I partially digress. Most Americans, that really just isn't a big thing of value to them, which is why, again, the cotton companies tried this years ago. And again, it was a cool idea. You scan, you know, you scan it. You see the picture of the farmer who grew the grew the cotton that went into your pants or whatever denim you were buying. It had zero effect on sales. That's why they stopped it. I mean, they even told it to me. Is I, I can't. Is 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 a in my IT capacity, so I can't really use the cover use the customer's name. But they were a cotton co-op, so they represented thousands of farmers. And again, they stopped because it didn't have any effect on their sales. And I suspect the same thing will come with Anheuser Busch. Because again, there's nothing unique about, again, it, it's good that they're buying this from these farmers, supporting the farmers, that's a good thing, but it's not unique to Anheuser-Busch. Any company who takes over their place, as as well as, I can't help but think, you have increasing market share from their competitors, like Coors Light, Miller's Light, Yangling, they're gonna be working with some of the same farmers. And they'll probably be increasing their market share, increasing how much they spend with them. So it's not that unique of a value add. So, you know, they have this little seal that says U.S. Farm Certified. Okay. Th th does that compel you to go buy a beer? Does it make you feel a little bit better to buy theirs versus the competition? When again, as long as the beer is not imported, more often than not, they're all supporting American farmers. Which again, is a good thing, but it's not unique to your brand. It's not unique to Anheuser Bush. So, to me, I can't but think this marketing... It's about as successful as the Dilma, well, no, nothing's worse than the Dilma Vaney business blunder of the century, but it doesn't give me a compelling reason to buy the product. It's not funny or amusing. It's barely informative. It, it's comical in their ineptitudes. I mean, again, you have someone just sitting, yeah, a farmer using a shovel in a big field of wheat or hops or whatever they're growing, and she's, you know, brushing the, the dirt off her hands, which, again, I mean, just, just go on Google, just search like modern farmer and more than that, the equipment is worth more than, our, more than the house and it's on a mass scale. So, it, yeah, and interestingly enough, they didn't show any of that machinery, perhaps they're trying to, you know, 
use the emotional allure of, you know, back in the day, farmers had to work even harder. Now they work hard, but different in different capacities, different ways. But I don't know. I think we're giving them too much credit. I think they're just hopefully inept. Now, the real question is, will they be, from a cultural perspective, will they ever get, will they, will they ever not be ratioed? Or will they, do, will they do anything to turn the train around this year? Or turn, well, I guess the train would be a bad metaphor, to turn the Clyde's deal of carriage around this year? I mean, they're paying a lot of money for all these brand endorsements, but so far I can't help but think, probably not. But let me know. I'd be fascinated to hear, as always, what you have to say. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, leaving a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.